Now, once you get an MF slab or Festool MFT, something with the 20 millimeter dog holes, you'll quickly realize how expensive clamps are for the 20 millimeter system compared to the three quarter inch holes. Now, if you're a professional or you just want to keep getting, did a white hair fall? My dead cat shedding. Stay up there, kitty. Now, for a lot of people, buying the clamps is the ideal way to go. You don't have to spend the time hacking the clamps together. You don't have to spend the time making a video about hacking clamps together. You can just keep doing what you like to do in your shop and not worry about making clamps. Buy something that's already proven. And I'll put some links in the description so you can help give me a little payday bonus buying the clamps I would have bought if I would have bought clamps, but I didn't. I would rather take that $150 and some of you can identify with me here, I'd rather take that $150 I would have spent on clamps and instead buy a TIG welder that cost 800 bucks plus $500 of welding supplies and $400 of unexpected welding supplies because that's how you rationalize a TIG welder. And then four months of learning how to TIG weld kind of anyway. Now I'm glad about the TIG welder. I think my future self is probably glad about a TIG welder. So naturally this video is about clamps that I've hacked together over the past couple of years of owning the MF slab. Let's start off with the progression of clamps over the past couple of years. Thing two clamp. Now, when I first got the MF slab, I Googled what to do about the expensive clamp problem. Somebody pointed out, and I'll try and find a link and put it in the description to cut off this bit of a quick clamp and do a twist and bend sort of operation there. And that works really well. Oops except for one main problem, a secondary problem, and a thirdary problem as well. Problem number one. Now that problem can be mitigated if you use two hands, which is kind of an unnatural thing to do. I don't like to use two hands on clamps if I don't have to, so that's kind of the main problem in problem number two. But also the clamping pressure isn't great. But I don't wanna dismiss these altogether. One main benefit of these is that you don't really have to have fancy tools to make these. You probably have a way to make fire to heat that up to bend it. Also, you might have these clamps on hand, at least I did, because these were the first clamps I ever bought and I haven't really used them very often since I've owned these bar clamps. So this is pretty much free for me and I think that's probably the case for a lot of people. And you can get over the little annoyances it still work. <clears throat> the next clamp style was this drill press clamp. I saw it over there at the drill press and I thought, I wonder if I can just thread this through the hole, screw it down and it work. And it does, and it's great under certain circumstances. Uh, first, it has great clamping pressure. It also is great for repeat clamps on the same thickness material, but it has a couple drawbacks. Number one, you still gotta use two hands to mount and dismount the thing. Also, adjusting for different thicknesses of wood is more annoying than the quick clamps. So that led me to the next design. But that led me to one of these metal clamps that I chopped a side off of here and welded a three quarter inch post to it. This is a solid steel rod and this works really well. Solves a couple of the problems, still has a couple. Great clamping pressure, one-handed operation, and still the consistent clamps on same material thicknesses, but still has the annoying issue here and an even more limited capacity right here. Not because it won't open up wide enough, but because this little swivel mechanism, once you get so wide, it doesn't clamp flat because it sort of stops back there. So you could tear apart this thing and fix it, adjust that part, but uh, I moved on to the internet. And I found a video, I'll put a link below, where a guy was welding bolts onto the bottom of these Harbor Freight bar clamps. And this is the design I think is just awesome. It has great clamping pressure, one hand to do that. Maybe not as fast as these for repeat clamps, but still just really awesome uh, clamping pressure, very quick clamp. So I made a few versions of this. This one here has a three quarter inch bolt. This one here just has a three quarter inch rod, solid steel rod. And this one here has a 20 millimeter bolt. So I thought I'd see which one I like best. 
And my conclusion is that they all work, but I'd prefer the 20 millimeter bolt with the threads cut off. My second choice would be the three quarter inch solid steel rod. And last choice would just be the three quarter inch bolt. I would definitely advise against using threaded parts because they're just gonna tear up the hole. And uh, I don't think that's okay. These do kind of lean back in the 20 millimeter holes, but I have not found it to be a problem. It still works. In fact, if you don't wanna weld anything and you don't need any excessively great clamping pressure, this actually works. It shouldn't. And this shouldn't work because the direction this is going is the direction that should actually loosen the clamp. If you end up being really desperate sometime and need a subpar clamp and just want to look cool doing it, this is great. So in summary, this drill press clamp is going to go back by the drill press. I won't use that again over here. The quick clamp is a great clamp if you don't have a welder, just want to use stuff you have on hand. It does work with the MF slab quite well, but the Harbor Freight bar clamp with a bolt welded on is arguably the ideal multitasker clamp for the MF slab, at least the ideal hacked up multitasker. I love these things. I have four of those made up, and my next step is to make three more of these because I like these too. They are great for repeat clamps on the same thickness of material, which I do fairly frequently. So I'm gonna make more of these. And stay tuned for the MF Slab Dogs video coming up soon. I keep a smoke detector out here, even though I make smoke relatively regularly, I at least want to know if there's smoke being made that I didn't uh, intend to make. That one's very hot. Mm -hmm. 